All right, guys, today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. We are going to be talking about the Springfield Prodigy. Again, I've done a few videos about this gun, and the primary reason why is because this has to be one of my favorite 9 mils out there. Now, don't get me wrong, there are several, especially nowadays, um, really solid and honestly good 1911, double stack 1911 slash 2011 platforms. There's the Platypus, there's Bull Armory that also does a pretty good job. Of course, we all know Staccato. Of course, there's Nighthawk and all kinds of other really solid 1911-2011 um, uh, like manufacturers out there making really cool double-stack 1911s. And the Springfield Prodigy was one of them. Now, to be fair, when this gun actually first came out, I was not a big fan of it. But then I actually got one, played with it, shot it. And I really did enjoy this gun, except for the fact that, unfortunately, unlike many of the other reviewers on YouTube, I got stuck with a gun that was less than reliable. So today, this video isn't going to be necessarily me talking about my experiences with this gun, though it's going to be kind of just thrown in there because... Once again, I've kind of made this gun a labor of love because I put a lot of time into modifying it to make it better, or I guess I should say updating it, because I wouldn't really consider anything I've done here like a modification necessarily to the performance, just making this gun 100% reliable. So today, I'm gonna to be talking about that. And when I say 100% reliable, I should leave a little asterisk here that if you are new to the 1911 platform, I just wanna note that the 1911 is not intrinsically the most reliable platform. There's definitely a reason why people have gone away from 1911s as a whole. There's a reason why um, we have moved on and you don't see, you know, as many manufacturers of 1911s out there. And when you do, they're traditionally kind of, you know, more like wood gripped, you know, uh, kind of parkerized, finished, kind of classic guns. But these guns can be good. They can do well. And uh, today, like I said, I want to tell you guys the modifications I did to my Prodigy in case you want to get a Prodigy and run it and make it your own. Now, I will say this to the credit of the Springfield Prodigy. I still think nowadays this is probably one of the cheapest 2011 slash double stack 1911s you can buy out there. Um, the Platypus still comes in at about 16 to 1700, depending on how you have it set up. Um, <clears throat> your Bull Armory for a Bull that is equivocal to the 2011 or the prodigy i should say here um you're gonna be looking at about 18 to 1700 so realistically the prodigy is now on street price about 13 to 1500 dollars i got this one for 1300 and so if you can find these for 1300 these are still some of the cheapest double stack 1911 slash 2011 style pistols you can buy however like i said they do come with a track record um of being unreliable. Now you can also ship these back to Springfield and they can do some updates and modifications for you. But I'm gonna show you guys today without any money, like in purchasing extras and modifications, how you can make this thing 100%. So first off, let's talk about it. So um, you're gonna have to be very handy with disassembling your gun and there's going to be some hand fitment to these guns. It's essentially kind of gonna be like a staccato where you are going to be hand fitting this gun yourself. And so first off, of course, this isn't gonna be really an explanation of how to break this gun down. These things break down like any 1911, 2011 out there. They all kind of break down the same. So the first things you're gonna wanna do is once again, Again, become acquainted with how to break this gun down. Secondly, what you're also gonna want is you're gonna want one of these bad boys. Now, if you don't have a Dremel already, honestly, Dremels are just really great for a lot of things. So you should already have one of these um, for modifying things. That's why this is hopefully free. If you do not have a Dremel, you'll have to go out and buy one. Now, the other two things you're gonna need is you're going to need a, a kit, the sanding and grinding kit, this kit right here, and you're going to need the polishing kit as well. Um, so you're gonna need this guy right here. These are both both super cheap. I'm not holding this one straightly diagonal because I don't want stuff to just fall all over the place. But with these two pieces and then what you're going to want is what I would say is probably about 600 or maybe 400 grit, 600 grit and 1000 grit um, roughly of wet dry sandpaper. And with, between those two things, um, like the Dremel with those two kits and then the sandpaper, you're gonna have everything you need to make this happen. So the first things you're gonna wanna do is with your frame. So this is the frame of the 19, or the, the Prodigy, the double stack, 
So this is the frame of your Prodigy. So the first things you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna polish these big frames, or frames, uh, big pieces of these big rails right here. These big rail sections become completely coated in a coating. I believe it's the same coating used here. It's like a Cerakote. And you're gonna to wanna to polish these all the way around. You're gonna to wanna to polish the top of them. You're gonna to wanna to polish the sides of them. You're just gonna polish that in general. Now, that's one of the most important things to do when it comes to this. Other things you can do, I didn't really find that were that useful, is polishing these rear rails. I don't really think it helped that much. Now, other things that you can do if you do wanna spend a little money and what I would recommend is replace this disconnector right here. You guys can see this little piece of silver metal. You don't have to and like I said I got my gun reloaded. And once again, I got my gun running 100% reliable with still having all factory parts, but um, there's this company called Brazos uh, Pro, I believe it is, and they make custom just trigger groups and disconnectors and hammers for these guns, but the disconnector itself alone costs $25. So it's not a huge expense, but that can help you quite a bit. Now, the biggest other issue that the Prodigy runs into is going to be in your top of your slide um, or the in the slide. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is two parts here. So first off, you guys can see this area of the slide here. You're going, you're going to wanna to polish this. Polish this to a thousand grit. You guys can see it's kind of mirror, mirror finished there. It is obviously coated in oil, so it's not gonna be beautiful, but you're going to wanna to do that. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is, and I'm not gonna break this down because this is still like oily and stuff, but you're gonna to wanna to polish the feed ramp in here. The feed ramp is notoriously bad for most 1911s, and that's because and this is probably my least favorite part about any 1911, 2011, whatever 11, um, is the feed angle on 1911s is notoriously very steep. That's why they typically struggle feeding um, things like hollow points because it's a very, very steep angle. And if you've ever looked at the actual like feeding cycle of a 1911 or 1911 style handgun, you will notice it's extremely abrupt. So you want to polish that once again to a thousand grit. Another thing that you will want to do is once again with your handy dandy Dremel, which you'll probably be using throughout this whole process, but you want this kind of bullet shaped um, polishing wheel which comes in the polishing kit that I just showed um, you want to take this and you just want to run it up that um feed ramp and then into the actual chamber itself. You wanna make sure that the chamber where the bullet is sitting and that whole feed ramp is polished. Like you want it to be um, smooth. You want it to be mirror polished and that's going to help you significantly with reliability because it reduces a lot of that drag from the very abrupt feeding angle. Now, if you try both of those things and your gun still isn't running 100% like mine wasn't, the next thing you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to get a little bit more involved and you're going to have to cut in a ramp in here. So you guys can see this little ramp right here. Other YouTubers have done videos talking about this, but essentially the best tricks that I saw when doing this before I did it myself was that essentially what you wanna do is take some Sharpie, put Sharpie on this whole area. And once again, after you polish this, it'll become clear when you first buy this. Um, this is kind of like coated as well. So you'll want, you'll obviously strip the coating when you polish it. But after you polish it, take some Sharpie, Sharpie this whole area right here, and then just put it in and you don't need, you know, like you don't have to fully reassemble your gun. Just take your gun like this and then just you know slap it back together and then just run um, just run it like this and do that you know probably about 20 times and what you'll do is you'll create a wear pattern from your disconnector engaging on this rail and what that helps you do is it creates a pattern or an area so that you know where to come in with your um, was a, your grinder essentially, which I'll show in just a second, and it'll show you where to cut your channel. Now it's important to do this carefully because if you take too much material off, you can have reliability issues because this area right here, right where this channel is cut, that's essentially the part of the slide that picks up the next round from your magazine. So if you do this incorrectly um, and you remove too much material, then you're gonna have reliability issues. And that's kind of a big deal because this is the slide of your gun. So like I said, this next part, um, like honestly for me, it's not that intimidating because I'm used to doing these types of things with knives and guns and stuff.
and stuff. So I'm used to like modifications and, you know, kind of just making guns and knives more serviceable. But do be careful with this because like I said, if you do too much, you can negatively affect the reliability of your gun. But what you want to do is typically in this grinding set, there's going to be a so there's gonna be like this little diamond wheel here you guys will see and once again this is kind of cone shaped and so this is actually perfect for what you want and so like i said after you um sharpie marker that area inside your slide uh, right there you know like i said you'll sharpie it you'll see the wear pattern you just want to make a nice little area right there so a nice little ramp and essentially what that ramp does is instead of having a really abrupt angle when your slide goes back and hits your disconnector, which is this little guy right there, that little piece of silver that's shiny, that is your disconnector. So essentially when the, or essentially, so where the most friction that I found uh, happened with your slide and the frame, at least of my Prodigy, was in when this slide was all the way back and when it was coming forward. That disconnector sat right there. And I actually, one time, I carefully kind of got it there, but I got that disconnector to hold the full weight of my slide under the pressure of the spring. So I knew that that was the issue. The biggest issue and the biggest drag with this setup, you know, from stock was that the disconnector was sitting on that shelf. So essentially what was happening, just to try to show you guys, is that like when the slide was fully in the rear position, this area of the slide was coming into contact with the di disconnector as it's supposed to with the design. But what was happening is because it was such a, an abrupt angle where this met the disconnector could actually cause a lot of friction and a lot of force for the slide to overcome and essentially what that means is is that when the side has to overcome the disconnector it's slowing your side down and making it to the point where at least with my handgun with my prodigy it wasn't going into battery fully it would go like right to the point just before we go into battery so that's where i was having an issue with this gun and after that relief cut that i made into it um, or after the ramp whatever you'd like to call it it became 100 reliable and that was like i said literally the the drag that was the thing that i needed to fix and so after doing that um like i said the gun just became super reliable and i haven't had any issues since then so once again your mileage may vary on this but that is my experience in making the prodigy reliable and now i can definitely tell you know like doing the same type of motion like this the disconnector doesn't have near as much drag on the slide as it normally did. So this is definitely something that I'd recommend looking into. And of course, I would always recommend when doing the um, relief cut, try to do it carefully, kind of start it off. And you know, like what I did was once again, a lot of hand fitment. So, you know, I made the relief cut initially and then I, you know, back the slide a bunch of times. And I was like, you know, is there friction? And there's still a little bit of drag. So then I did a little bit deeper and a little bit longer. And then there was still, you know, a little bit of drag. So then I just kept going back and forth. And once again, a lot of hand fitment where you're doing this kind of work and this kind of number. And uh, what I did was actually pulled the, you know, recoil spring off um, and I pulled the barrel, the recoil, um, the recoil spring, the guide rod, I pulled all of that off. So I just had the slide sitting on the frame. And once again, I'd put it on and it just test fit it back and forth and get it to the point where I liked it. And once again, where I didn't feel a lot of, if any drag from the disconnector. So once again, you know, be cautious with it. Don't just go at it. But I think the best strategies are, you know, use a Sharpie because the Sharpie will show you the exact track because mine's actually not quite in the middle of this slide. And maybe that's just mine personally. Maybe that's all the prodigies. Maybe they're just not, you know, like built high enough to spec or whatever, but it's just a little bit off to the left is what I found for my disconnector. So I'm definitely glad that I didn't just, you know, wing it and go in there with the uh, little diamond uh, grinding bit because I would have been sorely disappointed in the outcome. So um, yeah, so definitely um, that's what I would recommend for sure on my handgun. It worked out pretty well. At least I got my Prodigy to be 100% reliable. For those people that have it great out of box, awesome, happy for them. But I'm actually kind of glad that I got a bit of a dud. Once again, this thing really has only had just that issue with the disconnector and it needing to be polished. For me, I honestly found it to be just fine. I haven't had any like light primer strikes or anything like that out of this gun. It's been 100% um, 
great otherwise. And some people have reported that, you know, like their ambi safety is broken off. I haven't had that happen to me. Um, you know, I really haven't had any issues with the Prodigy except for the, you know, um, not wanting to fully go into battery. And so, like I said, I knew it was the disconnector, um, kind of just holding it up and preventing it and giving it a little bit too much friction. And so it was pretty easy to resolve once I knew what to do. So hopefully this video is useful to you guys if you do end up with a Prodigy. For me, myself, like I said earlier in the video, this gun is actually a lot of fun to shoot and I do really enjoy it. I think, you know, it having a steel frame with a polymer hand gives you a super pleasant, super easy shooting nine mil. And then because this thing has such a super thick, as you can see here, a super thick bull barrel, it is a super, super nice gun for shooting hot loads out of. And so if you're like me and you like to run plus P or plus P plus out of your gun, this is a really good platform for running really hot loads because it has a very thick, very big chamber slash barrel. And so it handles the hottest of nine mil loads, like they're just normal nines. So anyways, I think the gun definitely has some serious pros that a lot of people don't like to talk about. And everyone likes to just call it a giant, you know, turd or whatever. Um, and you know, fair enough, like I said, out of box, it does kind of suck that you have to do some hand fitment. But realistically speaking, I didn't have to put any money like I already had my Dremel, I already had these, you know, two kits and stuff. So I didn't have to put any money personally into the Prodigy with these modifications to make it better. And I got, in my opinion, a really good end product. So once again, there are certainly other modifications you can do to make the trigger lighter. You can replace, you know, your beaver tail safety and everything. Personally, for me, I don't really mind anything on this gun. Some people are very much snobs when it comes to 2011s. And so they're like, oh, you need to replace the trigger. It needs to be a two pound single stage trigger. You know, you have to have the precision, beautiful, you know, skeletonized hammer. And yeah, there are a lot of mem parts on here. And so, you know, take that for what it's worth. But honestly, I really don't have any issues with any of the MIM parts. Once again, you know, the hammer works just fine. The trigger works just fine. It's a good trigger as it is. You know, your the safeties work great. Um, I don't have any problems, objectively speaking, with this gun. So hopefully this has helped you guys. That's enough rambling about my experiences with the gun. As always, God bless, and I'm out.